Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. I got it, brother. Thank you. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to be talking about a little bit this morning about forgiveness. Now, a lot of people, when it comes to people forgiving them, who are aware of the scriptures at the very least, they like to come to Matthew chapter 18 here and point out many things. And I've already done a video about Matthew chapter 18, verses 15, on to verse 20 before. I'm going to touch on it a little uh, here again. But um, now we have to remember, too, that this is before the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, before the death, burial, and resurrection. They were still under the law. The law was still binding until the perfect sacrifice for sins was given by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, the blood shed on the cross. <clears throat> but to instruct us in righteousness, there is a lot here. Okay? We also have to remember that the king at this time, the king of the Jews, the son of David, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was on the earth offering the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, onto the Jewish people. And under the law, brethren, guess what? It was faith and works. Okay? That's what it was under the law. Okay? So, <clears throat> see, right division is imperative for this but to instruct us in righteousness. I'm going to hit this again. Excuse me. We're going to go over this again. Okay? So get your authorized version of the scriptures. Matthew chapter 18, we will be reading verses 15 on to verse 35. Okay? Follow me along. We begin. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Thy brother. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Today, in the time of the Gentiles, who is my brother or my sister? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? Thy brother. Okay? <clears throat> Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Privately. With your brother of the church of the living God. Okay? If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church, the body. <clears throat> but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and as a publican. Now, very quickly, go to the Pauline epistles in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Hold your place there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Ah, crisp pages. <laughs> First Thessalonians, chapter 3. Oh, hold on one second, brethren. <laughs> Sorry about that, brethren. I got it confused with Second Thessalonians, chapter 3. Second Thessalonians, chapter 3. We begin from verses 6 on to verse 18, 
close of the chapter in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother, those of the church of the living God, that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power. Meaning, as those who are called to preach, they do have the power to live of, not off, of the gospel. Okay? But Paul didn't do that, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Okay? He had the power given to him to live of the gospel. <clears throat> but he chose not to, to set an example that people shouldn't just wait idly around. Okay? For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any were, if that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, Working not at all, but are busy bodies. Keeping their bodies busy, looking like they're doing something when they're actually doing nothing. <laughs> okay. Now then that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. <clears throat> but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace, note that, how it says that. Now the Lord of peace ties in with verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you. Give you peace in doing what you know you ought to do according to the scriptures. Whatever that may be. <clears throat> the salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Going back to Matthew chapter 15, <clears throat> reading verse 17 again. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. The difference being the king was on the earth for this in Matthew chapter 18. Okay, let's continue. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Catholics like to bring that verse up to say that their little Jesuit priests have the authority to forgive sin. Okay? That's not what that is talking about. Okay? This is the different dispensation. Doctrinally, this is not for us. What is the teaching in verse 18? Okay. Because the king is there. It will be works in the millennial kingdom under our king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our father. You will not need faith in the millennial kingdom because, again, Jesus is going to be at Jerusalem. It's going to be by works. Okay. It's going to be by works. So, with that in mind, okay, with that in mind, here's the king speaking on to his people, the Jews, okay? Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Meaning, when it is of works alone in the millennial kingdom, which it shall be, you don't forgive someone, it's going to be bound in heaven. Get it? 
And that will be addressed in verse 35. We're not going to get ahead of ourselves, okay? But if you don't forgive someone during the millennial kingdom under the law or in the millennial kingdom, excuse me, um, that's going to be held against you, okay? And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, this verse 18 will be shed far more greater light upon with verse 35. Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that ye shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Two or three are gathered together gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, dispensationally and doctrinally, there is a very big difference here. Today, you are saved of the church of the living God, born again, converted, you know. You have God living within you. Okay, so for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Uh, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit living within us. What does this mean? Because the king will be on the earth. See. Verse 20 and verse of, well, from verses 18 on to verse 20 are specifically, this, this whole thing is specifically for the millennial kingdom. Okay. Where if you don't forgive someone during the millennial kingdom, neither will you be forgiven. Dependent on what you do, see. Let's continue. <clears throat> then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? My brother, my brother, okay? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Okay? All right. Now, hold your place there. Hold your place there and go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Doctrine specifically for us today in this dispensation. Okay? After the crucifixion, okay, the New Testament, time of the Gentiles that we are in. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20, on to verse 32. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's a supernatural work that the Lord does in you when God lives within you, see. Okay? Wherefore, putting away lying, lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. How many of you today at the Church of the Living God have blown that one? Hi! <laughs> right? <clears throat> Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither Give place to the devil. Aha, a clue. A clue, which we will touch on here in a little bit. Okay, but that's a very important clue. Hinge this. Hinge this in Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, we'll get back to this. Let's continue. <clears throat> let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands that the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication 
proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye, those who are saved, are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness. We're going to touch on that in a little bit too. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now, right there is in the tie-in to the rest of the verse in verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, to your brother or sister, not excluding the lost. You don't, as the church of the living God, you don't go outside your door being a putz on the people. You don't do that. No, no, no. There is this kind of thing called, uh, what is it? Uh, courtesy, decency, respect. People say respect is earned, not given. To the contrary, dear brethren, respect is given. Because if it's based upon earning, how many hoops do they got to jump through before you give them respect? Remember, God is not a respecter of persons, neither should we be. But for a person, spirit, soul, and body, who is made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body, okay? Common decency? Keep that in mind. But remember, and be ye kind one to another, those who are of the church of the living God, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, tie in, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Someone who is not of the church of the living God hath not their sins forgiven. We got to remember that. <clears throat> okay? We have to remember that. But does that, does that mean you, as the church of the living God, treat that individual like a jerk? No. No. We'll get back to this here in a little bit. Go back to Matthew chapter 15. Verses 23 under verse 35 now in Matthew chapter 18, excuse me. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, telling you what this is about, what this is for, who this is intended for, doctrinally, okay? Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. And loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Uh, apparently this guy soon forgot that his Lord forgave him that debt. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should be till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. 
and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now here's the tie-in for verses 18 on to verse 20. Here's the tie-in. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother, his brother, their trespasses. So see, during the millennial kingdom, okay, your forgiveness is going to be equated unto you forgiving other people. Why is that? Because the king himself will be at Jerusalem. Faith will not be there because our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be there presently, physically. Okay? So, it's all works during the millennial kingdom, see. So, if you, verse 18, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. This applies on to verse 35. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because your forgiveness, as pointed out in verse 35, is going to be determined whether or not you are also forgiving. Works. See. But to instruct us in righteousness, brethren. Look at verse 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. The tormentors for our instruction in righteousness. Go back to Ephesians chapter 4 now. Go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Crisp pages. <laughs> Crisp pages. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, where was that? Where was that? Okay. From verse 26 on to verse 31. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You can be angry. But don't sin in your anger. And if you have something that you are angry about, whether with a brother or sister of the Church of the Living God, or even some lost heathen out there, okay? Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Because if you do, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. If you hold on to anger, because remember, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Anger resteth is at rest in the bosom of fools. What is a fool according to the scripture? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? You let that anger rest within you. And you let the sun go down on your wrath. What's going to happen to you? As we saw in Matthew chapter 18, deliver them, deliver him unto the tormentors. You got anger in your heart and harboring it. Has anger rested in your bosom? Do you have torment over that? 
Do you truly enjoy? Do you truly enjoy resting in your anger? Now, I'm not talking about being angry with evil, with sin, or wickedness. I'm not talking about that. No. I'm not talking about that. We are to hate sin. We are to hate evil. Okay? Uh, the evil way do I hate. But we got to remember also too, brethren, you bear how many fingers pointing back at you when you're pointing? Right? Right? What's that anger doing to you? Because when you hold on to something like that, you're giving place to the devil to just pick, 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 and play around with it. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away with you, be put away from you with all malice. Twenty six and twenty seven. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Psalm eighty six. Psalm eighty six. One verse. One verse. Oops. One second again, brethren. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, brethren. Proverbs, not reading my notes right. Proverbs chapter 14, one verse. Um, any of you who have know how I take notes, uh, especially Brother Alexander Hartley knows how I take notes, they get really sporadic. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. Hmm. Think about that. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, giving place to the devil, and a stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. When you are in bitterness, when you are in anger, not righteous indignation, maybe your toes got stepped on. Maybe someone said something to you that you just didn't really like. Maybe someone offended you. Maybe someone insulted you. Maybe someone threatened you. Whatever it may be, the heart knoweth its own bitterness. And what is that? A stranger doth not intermittle with his joy. Think about this. Okay, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? Or if, uh, go back to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, chapter 3. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 16. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you. If you hold on to bitterness or anger in your heart, that stranger that will not intermittle with your joy, could it be peace? When your heart is in bitterness and in anger, being hardened, not letting things go. That stranger that will not intermittle with that joy is peace. And if you are not saved, 
you don't have peace. How could you? Even if you try to fake it, how could you have peace? How could you have peace? And remember too, brethren, of course, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, let's read. Uh, now, this is instruction in righteousness because the book of Hebrews is written specifically for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Check this out. Because remember, the coming millennial kingdom, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Our forgiveness today, by the way, is not dependent upon you forgiving someone else. Okay? Because the forgiveness of your sins is not your forgiveness. It is given to you by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. Okay? You have to remember that. But to instruct us for today, Hebrews chapter 12. Let's read verses 11. On to verse 16. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way and let it rather be healed. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Remember, this is for a different dispensation doctrinally. Instruction and righteousness for us, yes, is within the book of Hebrews. And yes, there are things that cross dispensational lines. But remember, primarily, the book of Hebrews is for the Hebrew people during the time of Jacob's trouble specifically. Okay, let's continue. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. giving place to the devil, to be defiled. Hello? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Think about that. What are you, what are you selling this peace that the Lord gives you for what? Anger? Bitterness? Grudge? You know what? Look at me. You know what's going to happen to you if you hold on to anger? Bitterness? Grudges? I, I've talked to you about this before. Number one, going to be defiled because you're giving place to the devil. It, it again, righteous indignation, hating evil, hating Roman Catholicism, okay? Hating every false way. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. You hold on to these things and just don't let them go. You're going to be defiled. His stomach is going to knot up on you as if it were a rope tied into a million knots. You're going to have a lack of fellowship with the Lord. The Lord could be silent to you when you read the scriptures. It will affect every aspect of your life in one way or another. If you harbor and hold on to these things. And see, too, brethren, you have to remember. When someone who is not of the church of the living God especially. Has done something evil to you. You have to remember. Unless they repent of themselves. And get saved. 
what they are going to be facing, facing falls short in comparison whether or not you forgive them. Think about that. Think about that for a second. Someone who ain't saved, who has done you evil, who have gone out of their way to cast mud upon you, to break you, to destroy you, who have sent information about you out in your own locality, while they are literally thousands of miles away across the sea. Those who would kill you, bludgeon you, then run you over twice to make sure you were dead. See, these people who are like that, who are lost, who have no peace, do you not realize what they're going to We know as a church of the living God, we know what their inevitable end is, what awaits them if they do not repent. We know that. We know that. And in that incident, you're going to harbor bitterness, anger over someone who's going to be spending eternally, eternity in hell, the lake of fire, screaming. Are you giving place to the devil? As you know, as a lost man, I held grudges. Oh. I would let a little stone become a mountain. And I wouldn't forget. I wouldn't forgive. That's what Jesuits do. Jesuits do not forgive nor forsake. Now, you don't be ignorant or foolish about it. Okay? Think about this too. You let something go. It's like, whatever. No harm, no foul. I forgive you. That might not necessarily mean that things will go back to the way they once were beforehand. Okay? I've been through that quite a bit before. You know? And not with those of recent times, but before. You know, you might have a fellowship with someone and something happens and anger and temper gets in the way or you disagree about something, right? Or you do something to somebody and you are forgiven or you forgive them. That doesn't mean that everything is going to go back the way they were before that happened. And sometimes in some cases, it's not favorable that it does such, okay? But brethren, you don't forgive people if you don't let things go. It's not going to affect your salvation. Your salvation is not dependent upon you forgiving someone else. But your life, your walk is going to be Clamorous, shambles. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That is true. That is true. But see, if you harbor a resentment such as that, what is that doing to you for your walk, Lord? Look at the lost people. Okay? Look at the lost people who harbor these things. Okay? Again, we're not to, we're, you know, someone who is the Lord's enemy, truly the Lord's enemy, they are our enemies. 
But as I like to, uh, as I liken it, you know, if my absolute worst enemy by his doing were to be dangling off of a cliff, would I help him? Yes. If I were dangling off of a cliff, and my most bitter enemy, unfortunately, were looking down at me, would he help me? I sincerely doubt it. He'd probably bop, stomp on my fingers. Brethren, for your for the sake of your walk, for the sake of fellowship with the Lord. When someone is an enemy of the Lord, they are your enemy. Just boy. But if a brother trespass against you and he comes to you privately, that's on you. What are you going to do with that? Because brethren, hi, I speak from experience. If you hold on to these things, it's going to wreck you. You're giving place to the devil. And it doesn't mean you be flippant about it. But be wise about it. Like I said, things will happen to you in your walk with the Lord. Where people will come and people will go. That happens. Wish it weren't the case. Sometimes I'm glad it's the case. <laughs> but see. Things like that happen. They do. They do. And sometimes things that once were, when things happen and things get resolved, they usually don't go back to the way they once were over here. You know what, brethren? That's okay. Because everyone of us shall give an account of himself to God. You know, I've only been saved for 12 years. Only 12 years, going on 13. And one of the, one of the many things the Lord showed me right away is, with myself personally, there are times, brethren, when you have to just let things go. Look at me. I hold no ill will or grudges against anyone. Are you, look at me. I hold no grudges or ill will against anyone. Those who are the enemies of our Lord, they are my enemies. But even to my worst enemy, unfortunately, even to him, what awaits you is far worse than anything that I can harbor against you. I hold no grudge, no ill will, nor, nor anger against anyone. And if I do get angry with someone, I will go to you personally if I am able to, to speak to you. But brethren, like I said, I've been there. I know what happens when you hold on to these things and do not let them go. It profits you nothing. Again, I'm not talking about 
the enemies of our Lord who are our enemies. I'm not talking about that. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Every one of us, the Church of the Living God, will give an account of himself to God. And even for those lost people, personally, my conscience is clear. And I hold no grudge or am bitter toward no man. Even unto you, my worst enemy, unfortunately. That's what the enemies of our Lord want. They want to get into your head so that you will, will let the sun go down on your wrath. That maybe a root of bitterness might spring up. Hence, they got you. See? I speak to you from experience. Brethren, sometimes you just got to truly, like modern Christianity has almost turned it into a cliche. But let them alone. They are the blind leaders of the blind. And if a brother or sister trespass against you, and they come to you, forget them. Because if you don't, that's on you. And I spare you. Because we are to have peace. You know, shalom, peace. Have you peace with bitterness? Hmm? Is a stranger not wanting to intermittle with that joy? If you're in bitterness or anger and holding on to these things? And brethren, the sun is out here by us today. It hasn't been out by us um, maybe once in almost, what, two weeks? But the sun is out. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And his mercies are new every morning. And with what's coming, brethren? Do you have room to harbor and to hold on to something that you shouldn't? You think about that. Okay? And again, before the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, I vow in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, I have no grudge, anger, hatred, ill will toward anyone. It matters not what you do to me. <laughs> I've had this skin um, rolled over quite a few times. <laughs> And the enemies of our Lord, who are our enemies. It's a waste of time, but they will do what they will do. Right now, brethren, the church of the living God 
needs to be warned, needs to be encouraged, needs to be edified, uh, needs to examine itself, and needs sanctification and purified. And if you ain't saved, my petty little grudges, if I had any, would mean are going to be this big in comparison to what awaits you. No beast so fierce, but hath yet some touch of pity. I have none, therefore I am no beast. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I love you, brethren. Church of the living God. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.